Yeah, let me rephrase his question. What he was asking is, he lives in another community. He's going to move to Nashville to start a church. When okay. do you recommend him getting in Nashville if he's starting previews in February? To start preview? I, I would say probably moving there, getting on the field anywhere from three to six months before your preview. I, I mean, that may sound scary, but that's the built-in urgency that you want. Urgency is a good thing. It motivates us. Right. Uh, one of the ideas that stood out to me today was the idea of using churches to build great cities rather than the cities existing just to bless, you know, bring yes. everyone to the building and that type of idea. Um, you mentioned the purpose of the comeback events or connection, uh, comeback connections is to get people to come to the next preview service and also heard the idea of starting small groups after you launch. But in my experience, that one-on-one -on -one discipleship and really working with people and reaching out in the community. How do you keep the focus on the community when you're so busy trying to build this service and to launch large and to do all these things and bring people back to the next service? I think you can only do one thing really, really well at a time, so that becomes your focus is the gathering. But like the gentleman's question over here about follow-up, part of the follow-up is people who've received Christ, people who are close to accepting Christ, meeting with them in the office. Discipleship is going on during that process. So it's not just this gather, gather, gather. There is that part. You want to be focused on gathering, but part of that is, is then follow up with just discipleship. Discipleship is both salvation and follow up and, and growth in the Lord. So that, that's all happening during this time. And, and re realize this is just a limited time. This is for a few months, and, and you can't keep this pace up. This is an incredible pace that you go at. It's like peak performance. You can only do it for so long, and then you fall back into a, a, something that works and that's sustainable. All right, last question there, and then we're going to switch gears a second. Now, yeah. you mentioned for promotion, getting the word out is so important, obviously, but um, you mentioned you did uh, some outreach stuff, yeah. giving out water bottles, whatever might have been in the community to get the word out. You mentioned mail outs. What other things did you do to get the word out to promote, I guess, if you will? We're going to talk about that um, tomorrow. Mark and Hal are actually going to be a do, do a marketing one. I'll say this. Um, we had a guy, his name is Pablo Cachon. He's Hispanic, and he said, you know what? Direct mail in our community, 70% Hispanic, did not, he said, it, it, it doesn't work. It, it doesn't fit our culture. So I said, Pablo, what fits your culture? He said, family emphasis, great music, great food. And so I said, well, let's build a preview and build everything around that. And, and you, you go door to door, you get the message out and, and do that. So he did that, and he did 90 preview, 120, and launched with 250. It's a similar, it's the principle of what is going to work in that community. You're being missional in your community to gather people. Hey guys, we want to uh, take a turn here, and, and you guys stay here because I'll flip some to you. Uh, we came to this uh, event, and uh, the planning of it was just to do a nuts and bolts, give away as much stuff as we could find, give away 20 grand to a church planner, and try to give you guys some tools. And that was the intent, and I think that's going, been going well. I, I think we're headed on track there, don't y'all? Yeah. <clears throat> but one of the things has been popping up, and I've had three people now say to me, what about coaching networks? Because we do those. So I want to talk to you a minute about that. This is something we just made up in the hallway, which is the way you <laughs> strategize a church. Now, we've done coaching networks for a long time, but we weren't planning on doing one here. But I want to talk to you a minute about coaching networks. And rather than me talk about them and pimp them, uh, a couple of the guys, I don't need sermons, guys. This isn't your chance to teach. But uh, that have been in a coaching network that are here, I, I want to hear some of the value. Let me, Mark, weren't you in Ron's, or whose coaching network were you I in? I was in Dave and Ron's coaching da network. Oh, Dave and Ron, excuse yeah. me. Uh, value for you, one minute. Uh, the value for me being that coaching network? Yeah, I, I, I think part of uh, what really helped me with coaching in general, uh, whether it be pre-launch or especially post-launch, I mean, pre-launch was good because it taught me all these strategies that I'd follow. Uh, Post-launch is you're going to get past all of this stuff. You're going to implement everything that we talk about. You're going to get past your grand opening. And you're going to have kind of this oh crap moment. And you're going to be like, what do I do now? 
And I had a crisis because I was like, somebody tell me what to do. Because I've been, and, and so it was so nice to be able to have other guys like Dave, like Ron, just kind of say, okay, OC, Mr. OCD, just kind of calm down a little bit. And <laughs> you, you, you've done good. This is what you're going to do next. Let me say this in the coaching network. The coaching networks are not about a lecture time. There are 12 people, and it's ebb and flow. We, we're dealing with uh, uh, pressure points and all that. But several of the guys in the room here have been through some networks that have helped them. Paul mentions it. Go ahead, Paul. Jump. Uh, yeah, the, the thing about coaching networks that's awesome, five and a half years ago I sat in the same conference, um, and they talked about all this stuff. It's like drinking from a fire hydrant. But the coaching networks made it a water fountain. Do you know Paul? Um, and, and it just was an awesome opportunity to do two things. Number one, there's guys who are at the same point you are in the journey, behind you in the journey, and ahead of you in the journey. And they are the most generous and honest people you will find. They will help you avoid driving off a cliff if you listen to them. Um, and so learning from their mistakes so you can make your own is an awesome, awesome benefit. Um, second thing, they're the most giving as far as resources, support, and help. They will be the ones that will help you find a trailer, equipment. They are the most generous guys. And just having those people who know what you're going That's through, cool. who have been there, or who you get to Very be cool. there for um, is just Very absolutely cool. huge. It becomes the support that allows you to do this great work that God has birthed in your heart. There's no money in coaching networks, but there's a fee. Uh, <laughs> There's a little laugh line there. Obviously, not much of one, so I got only a little laugh. Thank you for that. He's just making this up <laughs> as we <He> go. <laughs> Here's the deal. Ron Sylvia is dusting off his coaching uniform, and he's going to coach this one. It'll go six months. It will meet here at the Springs. It will go from 10 to 4 will be the time frame. It'll cost you $100 to register if you do not make it in the group, and everybody won't. We'll give you your $100 back. We will not invest it in the Vat Dow and give you 80% of it tomorrow. <laughs> You get 100% of it back. But if you're interested, I'm going to have a couple more guys mention it. But if you're interested, if the guest services, you must pay $100, and then it'll be 100 a month, which that's the cheapest coaching I know of. And um, Ron's going to lead it. You'll get the resources. There's notebooks, all that stuff. Um, and then from that, he will pick a group of 12 and go. And if there's enough, maybe we start a second network or whatever out of that. Networks, I, it's just... It's, it's like I started, uh, anybody here have an iPod, in, 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 not an iPod, excuse me, an iPhone? Uh, I pass. I'm using Couch to 5K right now. And Couch to 5K, you can run your music or your sermon there, and then there's this lady with an Australian accent, which she loves me. And she'll say, okay, in about 10 seconds, cool. she'll have to start running. Actually, a little bit more Australian there. We're, but anyway, and, and so then I run, and then she'll go, now you're doing Let's really well. I love this. She doesn't even know me. She's telling me I'm doing good. And you got about 30 more seconds, and then I know I can walk. And then they'll say, okay, you're abreast. you got 30 seconds for your run. And it's coaching, and it's a piece of cake because I'm not having to focus on it. i got somebody helping me. Our coaching is kind of set up like that. It's peer-to-peer. You'll do presentations in there. Uh, you'll, you'll do your presentation trying to raise money. They'll teach you how to raise money. All that stuff's a part of coaching. One last word because we got a guy over here who's been in a coaching network, and I think now you're sending somebody back. Is You got a microphone? Okay. Gene, go ahead. Uh, the, three and a half years ago, we started a church in our house, and there was 33 people there, and uh, we came to a conference like this about a week after we started, and if they Hal let me know right away a, that um, I didn't actually have a church, but I had a really good launch team. Couple months. If and they so don't we want to drive here or can't, and, uh, that shared that with the people that, that were there, and basically did uh, what was suggested and it's been uh you know it's been a roller coaster it's been great it's been tremendously successful but that's honestly i shudder to think what it would yeah. have been like so that that's we, fine we, we don't muddy got it. involved yeah. Yeah. in well, this have we not got it'll, coaching it'll, one of the things that they told the guys us that, who will join uh, this will at the very first meeting it. we're they at is compete. run yeah. outside and sign up for a coaching network mm -hmm. uh i, I remember they we, we brought a whole team of people and they said if you really care about what you're doing, tell the person that's your pastor the most important thing that he needs to do is go out and sign up and get in a coaching network because it's going to make all the difference in the world. And it did. Mm. And I still do it. I'm still in house coaching network. This is some three and a half years later. Um, it's great. Uh, uh, fantastic. All right, man. Listen, so if you have questions, um, if you've been in a coaching network, raise your hand. These are the experts. Look at them. Ask them any question you want. Uh, but out at the information table, again, we just threw this up today. If you're interested, fine. If you don't, Ron still will have Christmas and uh, buy his gifts for his son's wedding 
<laughs> Soon, I understand. So you might want to think about that to help. Hey, thank. Give these guys a hand up here. <laughs> All right. Good job, Mark. All rise. Let's pray. Father, you're so good to us, and we're just grateful. Thank you for the chance to hang out with people who love Jesus. Thank you for the chance to be inspired and catch the passion. Lord, at the end of this day, I, I pray we'd have a tool, something in our hand that will make us more effective in making it a tough place to get to hell from wherever we're starting a church. Use us, we pray, in Jesus' name.